Hello, and welcome to this lesson where we're going to take a look at designing active low and high pass filters. For our active filters, we're going to use op amps as the primary active circuit element. And hopefully, as you'll see, it's really easy to design low and high pass filters with op amps. Um, very simple topology, very simple equations, only a few basic sort of algebraic things that you need to do. Um, so yeah, let's just go ahead and get right into it. So let's kick things off by taking a look at the basic op amp circuit that hopefully you learned about in your circuits one class. Uh, we've got an input node that's going to feed to some. You probably learned it as a resistor, but I'm just going to go ahead and just draw a box here and call it Z1. And that fed to the negative terminal of your op amp positive terminal goes to ground and then there's our output node and then there's a feedback loop that ties from the output of the op amp back around to the input we're going to call that z2 and we've got our input voltage vi plus minus and then our output voltage vo plus and minus and that's our basic op amp circuit so the transfer function for this circuit is given as this guy. H of S is just equal to minus Z2 over Z1, right? In circuits one, you probably just learned that R2 over R1 was the gain of that op amp circuit. We can use this to make a really simple low pass filter. So let's go ahead and redesign the circuit. In fact, let's just go ahead and label it right here. This is our low pass op amp filter spoiler and we've got an input node that's attached to a resistor that we'll label as R1 our feedback node Oop. <laughs> my sort of goofy looking op amps is the other end of that feedback node. And then we have the output. Oop, and I totally screwed up the polarity there. And that should be minus N plus. Plus goes to ground. And then we have our feedback loop. And then in the feedback loop, what we're going to have is another resistor that we'll call R2 in parallel with a capacitor that we'll just label as C. V in, V out. And there's our topology for the low pass op amp filter. Now it's really actually pretty easy to derive our transfer function for this filter. Um, remember, of course, that using our Laplace transform, ZR is just equal to R and ZC is equal to one over SC. So if we sort of plug in our transfer function here, we're going to say H of S is equal to negative Z2 over Z1. Z2 is going to be the R2 and C in parallel. So we'll have negative, let's put it up here as, it would be R2 times 1 over SC over R2 plus 1 over SC, all of that over R1. Now let's go ahead and simplify that a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean a lot of bit. So what I want to do is actually keep the negative sign. I'm going to factor out the top R2 and the bottom R1 first. That's going to be, you might recognize that right off the bat, is our gain equation or our gain expression for our regular op amp circuit. And that's going to leave us with 1 over SC over R2 plus 1 over SC. Now we can simplify this guy just a little bit. I'm going to factor out first the R2 from the denominator. Make sure I've got all my other stuff here. HS is equal to negative R2 over R1. Factoring out that R2 is going to give me up top 1 over S times R2 times C. And you probably remember if you paid attention or watched our passive filter video, you can probably see where this is going. And that's going to give us 1 plus 1 over SR2C. 
And then the last thing that I want to do is factor that s out of this out of the denominator. So we're going to have hs is equal to minus r2 over r1 times factoring that s is going to leave an s there in the, denom in the denominator and it's going to cancel out with that s there up on the top so we're just going to be left with 1 over r2c over s plus 1 over r2c. So there we go. There's our general form of our transfer function for our low-pass filter. And you probably hopefully recognize this as the transfer function of our passive low-pass filter. Well, the same structure as our passive low-pass filter, at least. So if we write it in a general form, we're going to say the transfer function for our low-pass filter is equal to minus k times omega c over s plus omega c, where k is equal to what we call the passband gain. And that's just equal to R2 over R1. What makes active filters cool is, remember in passive filters, the best we could hope for was one unity gain at our center frequency or at, at our sort of cutoff frequency. Um, active filters actually let us not only filter out and reduce the stop band frequencies, but actually let us amplify the frequencies in the passband. So the passband does have some gain. You can design them to amplify the frequencies you want while you suppress the frequencies you don't want. And then of course, omega c is just equal to the cutoff frequency. And that's just equal to one over r 2 c. And there we go, there's all the stuff that we need right here for our active low pass filter. We've got the simple topology with the resistor and resistor R2 and the capacitor C in parallel up in the feedback loop, R1 hanging out on the outside. The gain is just R2 over R1 and the cutoff frequency in radians per second is one over R2 times C. So let's go ahead and move on to our active high pass filter. And again, if you watched the passive filter circuits, you're probably going to know what happens here. We're just going to kind of flip everything over. So here in the initial sort of impedance, the Z1 is going to be now a resistor in series with our capacitor C. So that's going to be R1 and C. And that's going to feed to our op amp on the negative input. We'll have our output, and then on the feedback loop, we'll just have the single resistor, which we'll title R2. And just like before, we can really easily derive our transfer function. Oop, let me go ahead and label my input and output voltages, V I and V out. The transfer function here is H of S, just like before, is equal to minus Z2 over Z1. So that's gonna be equal minus Z2, now it's just R2 over um, R1 plus one over SC. And to get the sort of same structure that we had before, what I'll start off by doing is just factoring out the R2 and the R1 to get my passband gain, R2 over R1 times, it's going to be 1 over 1 plus 1 over S R1C. And then I'll factor out this S from the denominator of that second expression there. And that'll leave us with this. S, H of S is equal to minus R2 over R1 times S up top over S plus 1 over R1C. Now this should look just Look pretty familiar, it looks just like the transfer function for our passive filter, just with this sort of gain element tacked on. And so we'll go ahead and write H of S is equal to minus K, still our passband gain, but this time times S over S plus omega C. Where just like before, K, the passband gain is equal to 
R2 over R1. And our cutoff frequency omega C is just equal to um, 1 over R1C. Now the last thing I want to talk about before we work out a simple example is this concept of the cutoff frequency. In our active filters, we're going to take a different, a slightly different approach to our, like what we consider the cutoff frequency. And what we're going to do is actually apply a logarithm to it. So we're going to take our cutoff frequency and say that we want to take it to 20 times the base 10 log of Remember before our cutoff frequency was one over square root of two, the magnitude of our um, transfer function. So we're actually gonna take that and do it by a logarithm, not one over square root of three. Let's get ahead of myself. But that is equal to minus three dB. So three decibels. So in our active filters, we'll say that our cutoff frequency is at the minus three dB point. So it's three decibels lower than the passband gain, whatever that is. So we'll see that illustrated in our example. So let's go ahead and actually do that example. So let's say example. And here's what we want to do. We want to design an active high pass filter. with a cutoff frequency equals 500 radians per second and a passband gain k equal to 10. And we also want to use a 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor. So design an active high pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 500 radians per second and a gain of 10 using a 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor. So this is pretty easy. Let's start off by using, since we we're given a value of the capacitor to use, um, let's use our cutoff frequency. So we know our cutoff frequency is equal to one over um, R1C. We can rearrange that to be that R1 is just equal to one over omega c times c. So we plug that in, we're going to get r1 is equal to 1 over 500 times 0 0.1 times 10 to the negative 6. And that's going to get us a value of 20 kilo ohms. Now r2 is a function of k, so we know that k is equal to r2 over r1. So we can rearrange that and say that R2 is just equal to K times R1. And so R2 is just equal to 10 times 20K, 20 times 10 to the third. And that's just going to get us 200 kilo ohms. And that's it. We are done designing our filter. So let's go ahead and draw our result here. We've got our input terminal here attached to a 20 kilo ohm resistor connected in series to a 0 0.1 microfarad capacitor connected in series with our negative input of our op amp positive input of the op amp goes to ground. We've got our output, and then our feedback loop is our other resistor, R2, which is our 200 K ohm resistor, and that ties back around. And we've got our input, VI and V out. And there we go, man. That is our high pass active filter. That's all there is to it. Um, as you hopefully saw, it's quite easy to do. Before we call it quits, let's go ahead and write out our transfer function and see if we can visualize it. So our transfer function here, basically everything was given to us in the expression is gonna be minus 10 times S over S plus the cutoff frequency, which was 500 radians per second. So what I wanna do 
is click over here to Wolfram Alpha. So let's plot it just like before. Plot. Um, and remember, I'm going to do 20 times, not 30 times, 20 times the log. We'll fill in that in a second. We'll go omega from 0 to 1,000 readings per second. And then in here, remember, we start with the absolute value. And we had minus 10 times s, so times i times omega divided by, in parentheses, i times omega plus 500 radians per second. Let's see what that gets us. And if you're using Wolfram Alpha, if you just type in log, it's going to say that it assumes it's the natural log. We want to use the base 10 logarithm. So I'm going to click on that real fast. And then there we go. So here is our, what they call the Bode plot, the, th the logarithm plot of our guy here. So if we look for, where was 500? 500 radians per second would be right here. Now we wanted to be 20. Um, so everything is scaled to this DB, this like top point at 20. So we want to be three decibels below 20. So we want to be at about 17 at our 500 radians per second. So if I dial in 500 radians per second, and you kind of look at the vertical axis, you can see that we're actually right at 17, which is three decibels below 20. So from this plot, we can see that our filter is um, as we hoped it would be. Hopefully you saw that designing an op-amp, low-pass, or high-pass filter is quite easy. All you have to do is use that basic um, op-amp sort of feedback loop uh, circuit, that inverting amplifier circuit, um, and have some really sort of simple equations for calculating your cutoff frequencies and your gain. Remember, that's what makes active filters cool, is that not only can you sort of suppress the frequencies you don't want, but you can actually amplify the frequencies that you do want, which is a pretty awesome feature to have. Um, in the next video, we're going to talk about scaling, which is how do you actually pick the values of the capacitors and resistors that make sense for your particular frequencies. Um, notice in the example we did, like we just sort of arbitrarily chose 0.1 microfarads to be our capacitor. Um, it turns out with different frequencies, there are different values that are more appropriate for those frequencies. And in the next lesson, we're going to talk about how to figure that out. Um, so as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. Um, and if not, I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Thank you.